the director of the Secret Service, resigned today. Yeah. She says that she's going to miss being in the White House, but knowing the Secret Service, she should be able to come back anytime she wants. <laughs> The door is always open. Uh, how did this intruder get so far into the White House? Don't they have, don't they have guard dogs there? There were a lot of officers there, and there was concern the dogs might attack them instead. <laughs> Sounds strange, but it makes more sense when you find out a lot of Secret Service agents are cats. Uh, that turmoil at the Secret Service target practice for late night comments, not so funny at the White House, where they forced out Director Julia Pearson after tone deaf testimony on Capitol Hill. Top lawmakers now calling for a top to bottom shakeup. ABC's chief White House correspondent, John Carl, has more on what it will take to restore confidence in the president's protectors. In 1981, when Secret Service agent Tim McCarthy took a bullet for Ronald Reagan, he was just doing his job. The bond between an agent and a president is built on trust and respect. And despite the agency's security lapses and scandals during his six years in the White House, President Obama has always stood up for the Secret Service. You still have confidence in the Secret Thank Service? You. The Secret Thank Service does a great job. Thank you. I appreciate it, guys. I'm grateful for the sacrifices they make on my behalf and my family's behalf. Do you solemnly swear? A week later came Director Julia Pearson's disastrous appearance before Congress. Well Profoundly inadequate, shocking disgraceful, uh, outrageous. Is there any one of those adjectives you disagree with? No. Her resignation came after a series of new revelations first reported by the Washington Post. The September 19th fence jumper armed with a knife made it much further into the White House than the Secret Service first said. Back in November 2011, it took the Secret Service five days to figure out that bullets had struck the White House. And last month, the final straw, the disclosure that a man with a criminal record carrying a gun got onto an elevator with the president during a trip to Atlanta. How dark a moment is this? Uh, it's an embarrassment. It's not our brightest day, no question. But the Secret Service has a 150-year history, and we don't go away. If there's something that's broken, we fix it. The once exalted agency is now facing intense scrutiny. For this week, Jonathan Carl, ABC News, the White House. Let's talk about this now in the roundtable, joined by Peggy Noonan from the Wall Street Journal, CNN's Van Jones, and one of the top teams in political journalism, authors of Game Change and Double Down, now the managing editors of Bloomberg Politics, Mark Halperin, John Heilman, your new program, All Due Respect, premieres tomorrow. And Mark, let me begin with you. The, the White House you know, had no choice on, on Pearson by the end of the day on Tuesday, but they did not want to push her out. They don't want to, no president wants to fight with the Secret Service, the Pentagon, the intelligence agencies. Those are tough bureaucracies to take on. I would have preferred the president fire her rather than letting her quit. Management, he, it was his selection. When people say this is not really his, his problem, he picked her to run the, the Secret Service. It is unacceptable to the country. We all respect the individual agents and the job they do, but it's unacceptable for them to be so weak. And I would have preferred he fire her and announced big changes right away. Especially Peggy Noonan after Director Pearson did not reveal that elevator incident when she spent a whole day testifying on Capitol Hill. It was so amazing. She talked and talked and talked in her testimony. Then it ends. Then the Washington Examiner and the Washington Post come out with this information that she somehow forgot to include <laughs> about the scariest incident, the president in the elevator, the guy jumping around. He's got a gun and a, apparently a, an unfortunate pass. One of the things that seems to me about uh, the Secret Service story is that it's not only incredibly dangerous that the service unit isn't working, it's also got to be turned around quickly. This is not the kind of thing where you can say, you know, eight we'll months from now, we got to have it working. It's got to be working tomorrow well, morning and, and, and tonight. And John Hummond, that is a good point. The, 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 the White House now, the, for this first review is only in the incidents that have been reported. It's right. not a top to bottom review. Right. And then you want to know what other incidents there are. There was one uh, le much less serious that was reported at Bloomberg last week where uh, like someone got backstage at a Congressional Black Caucus. Yeah. Uh, they thought he was a congressman. Uh, they thought yeah. he was a congressman. There was confusion. They eventually found out and they got him out of there. But again, how that guy got back there. There are a lot of questions about that should be discussed in a, in a top to bottom review that goes back historically. And then the question of how you get to the point where people have confidence in the whatever the review finds, which is that we'll never see 
the results, even if it's successful, even if changes are made, it's hard to demonstrate those things going forward, right? Because the way the service operates. And Van Jones, another concern, I was struck by this front page story in the New York Times this week, talks about blacks seeing flawed shield for president. Uh, they quote Congressman Emanuel Cleaver saying, well, the Secret Service, they're trying to expose the president. You hear a lot of that from African Americans, in particular, this concern that somehow the Secret Service isn't doing all they should be doing yeah. for their president. Well, first of all, I, I think that is unfair. Um, I, I did get a chance to work in the, in the White House. I know how hard this job is. I, let's, let's not forget, if you're a Secret Service person, you are one second away from history being made in a negative direction your entire time you're there. Good it's point. a very high-stress job. People sign up for this job. Uh, we, we have to respect them and appreciate them. But we have to remember the history of African-American leaders being killed in this country, whether you're talking about Medgar Evers, whether you're talking about uh, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King. So there's a, a big sensitivity in the black community to from the minute he first announced, every African-American that I knew above the age of 50 said he's going to be killed. And so there is a huge concern that this level of, of shenanigans is going on. The last thing I want to say is this president has been threatened more than any other president, um, and, and we, he deserves a better job. I wish that, that I wish that the Secret Service had only the job protecting the president, and, not all these other stuff. And Peggy, this ties into this broader concern you wrote about this week. The title of your column this week: bureaucratic brazenness. You know, this loss of confidence in every official who comes out there and tries to calm us down. Yeah, there's a sort of laxness one perceives that is going on in the executive agencies. To my mind, as I look at this White House six years in, I see a great deal of articulate thought and a great deal of, of you know, let's do some rah-rah, some build the spirit, some this and that. But they don't seem that good at running the government, at running their own agencies. There have been a series of scandals, as we know, from early days of GSA through the Veterans Administration, which I think is a very tough uh, 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 mishandling by the government. This latest one is just uh, uh, the Secret Service. It feels like things aren't quite working anymore. How, how big an issue is competence in the midterms? I think it's a big issue if the Republicans are able to make it one because unhappiness with Washington goes to both parties, but the president does run the executive branch. Republicans, I don't think, have found a way to talk about it and connect it up to the economy. So potentially a big issue, and I think it, it should be something discussed, but I haven't seen any Republican candidate actually draw the lines together in a way that's that relevant to voters.